Hey, what's up 3Ders? 3D Theory here. Today we have the 3D ZW Man heat set press for threaded inserts to unbox, use, and review. By the way, this is not a sponsored video and I got this heat insert press from Amazon myself. This specific model I have comes with 370 threaded brass inserts in varying sizes from M2 all the way to M8. This set specifically runs for $55.88 US. You would have to get the screws separately to screw into the inserts, but I already have a bunch and I'll be showing this for the demonstration. By the way, when M2 or the M3 name is used to describe the size of the screw or insert, it's referring to the diameter of the threads on the screw and it's in metric units, meaning millimeters in this case. I was always curious about these heat insert presses because it cleanly presses the inserts down in a 90 degree angle so your screws don't go in at an angle. Instead, they'll just screw in straight down. I would imagine that having a press would also be useful for someone mass producing 3D printed or plastic parts and has, say, 100 units to do. This press will really help in increasing efficiency while making sure the inserts are pressed in correctly. Heat set threaded insert tools like the 3D ZW Man is designed for embedding metal threaded inserts into plastic components, typically used in 3D printing and plastics manufacturing. These tools heat the inserts to a temperature that allows them to be pressed into a slightly smaller pre-drilled hole in a plastic part. As the insert cools, it contracts and forms a durable bond with the plastic, providing strong, wear-resistant threads for screws and bolts, making the structure stronger and more stable. Heat set threaded inserts are super handy for 3D printing projects, both for practical and creative purposes. They're great for putting together things like electronic cases, such as the Raspberry Pi enclosure, which lets you access your electronics easily while keeping them stable. They also work well for assembly purposes for final products, like the iBoss Polyphemus, where you need strong, reusable fasteners. It's also used for making props like the Lightyear laser blade that I made. These inserts let you add electronic parts that might need regular battery changes, which is something I wish I used when I first made this. They're popular in cosplay too, helping costumes last longer and stay functional by letting you securely attach and adjust parts. Another cool use is in building modular toys or interactive educational models that people can put together and take apart over and over without damaging the plastic. Now that we know what a heat insert press is and could be used for, let's get this thing unboxed. All right, let's open up this box here. It comes in a standard brown box. Here's the manual. It's pretty simple, though the instructions could be clearer. They don't explain much, but there's a helpful video on YouTube. Next, we have the brass inserts in various sizes, and these appear to be the wheels for the gantry. This is just a little plastic topper to make it look nice. We'll show you more on that later. Here are all the screws and a spring. We've also got various tips for the inserts. Over here, there's a little push down handle that attaches on the side. And this is the clamp for the soldering iron. Here's the aluminum bar made of metal intended for the wheels. We also have a wrench and Allen keys. Oh, and look, there's the platform. It feels pretty heavy and dense, actually with a bit of weight to it. It has nice rubber feet on the bottom. Here's the soldering iron, covered with a red cap. We'll just take that off. It seems that the shaft is a bit thicker, which allows the clamp to hold it securely. And here's another metal piece. Feels very nice and dense. Good quality. All right, let's move on to the first part of building this thing. We'll start by grabbing two of the screws from here, which we'll screw down with the hex key. Here's the hex key. Let's make sure we have the right one. We're just gonna insert the screw there, get it started, and then the other one as well. We'll use the hex key to tighten them up nice and tight. Grab another two screws here. This is the metal horizontal bar. And as you can see, there's an extra big hole here, unlike the ones in the back area. This is specifically for the front little hex screw to fit right in. We'll start by throwing in a screw and begin screwing it in. And we'll do the same for the other one. Then we'll use the hex key to tighten them up. 
All right, now for the handle. Let's get that out. First we'll place this washer, then screw the handle on nice and tight. Now let's attach the clamp. It comes with some screws and washers. This is where the thicker part of the soldering iron fits into the clamp. Lay the washer onto the screw and do that for both of them and pop them right into the holes. Flip it over while holding the screws in place. Then we'll add the nuts and latch onto the metal bar. I'm going to flip the soldering iron around so it's facing the right direction and then tighten those screws with the hex key. Alright, now we'll grab these silver screws and attach the little backing onto them, which helps them stay in place on the metal railing. We'll do the same for the next one, but this time we'll add the soldering iron bar and a spring onto the silver screw. Next, take the second silver screw and screw it into the horizontal bar. We want to make sure these wheels are nice and snug on the railing to prevent any movement. As we're testing it here, it looks like it's holding up pretty well. Now, for the cap we mentioned at the beginning, we're just going to pop it on top just like that. Here's the final result. It actually looks really nice and fits in well with the other 3D printing style gear. So it's looking pretty good here. I'm just going to test it by moving it up and down, and it's working great. Now we're actually ready to jump into SOLIDWORKS and start modeling the box where we'll be putting the threaded insert. Alright guys, we're now in SOLIDWORKS and I'm going to start on the top plane creating a rectangle, sizing it to 55 by 90 millimeters. Next I'll add an 8 millimeter square in the corner. I'll then draw a couple of construction lines, both vertical and horizontal, and place a little X in the corner square as construction lines to mark where the hole will go. I'm making it 4.1 millimeters in diameter, just 0.1 millimeters smaller than the threaded insert, which is 4.2 millimeters. This way, when we press in the hot insert, the hole will expand slightly, then tighten as it cools, ensuring a snug fit. Now I'll mirror these corner squares with their holes to the bottom and right of the sketch. Next, I'll create a 2.5 millimeter thick wall on the left and top sides, and then mirror these walls to the other sides. Once you've mirrored the sides, we'll do the same for the bottom, and then we're ready to start extruding. I'm selecting all the faces that I want to extrude. I really enjoy using SolidWorks for these kinds of projects. Makes it a lot easier than Maya which is what I used to use. After extruding the top part, we'll extrude the bottom to add another 2.5 millimeter thick wall. I'm adjusting that now. It's almost ready to go, except I need to set the depth for the hole. I don't want it too deep, just enough to match the 4 millimeter height of the threaded insert. So I'll set it to 4.1 millimeters to allow for a little wiggle room. From this point on, I'm going to add some fillets. I'll start by selecting all the edges that need filleting, working my way from the right to the left, then back down to the right and over to the left again. I'll do the floor all in one go. Then I'll fillet the outer edges as well as the bottom to give us a nice smooth surface. Now it's ready to go. Next we'll start working on the lid. It's going to be the same dimensions as the box, but with two holes this time. One at 3.5 millimeters for the screw to pass through, and another at 5.5 millimeters for the screw head to rest in. I'll add vertical and horizontal construction lines to help mirror these features across the bottom and the right side. Then it's ready to be extruded. We're going to be extruding these parts here by 3 millimeters to add a bit more thickness. Using the inner circle, we'll do a surface face plane offset by 1.9 millimeters. Which matches the height of the screw head. Then I'll just fill at the edges and the top side of the surface and this component is all set.
It's looking great. All right, now that we are done here, I'm gonna start 3D printing. I'll start this gray PETG one and a red PLA for the other. Both are ready to go. All right, the print's finished up. Let's get this off the PEI sheet. The lid came out really smooth and the box is looking good too. The PLA came off without sticking at all to the PEI sheet, which is great. The lid also didn't stick to the PEI sheet and they both look good together. Now let's unravel the power cord and expose the soldering iron tip. We need to change it out because we're using an M3 by 4 by 4.2 millimeter for the brass inserts. Here are the three printed boxes that we'll be setting them into. I've got the right tip that fits the brass inserts and we also need to replace the shaft piece inside, which I'll show you right now. Here's the piece that will be replaced and we haven't screwed in the tip just yet. We'll just pop it in, screw it into place, and then attach the tip to the soldering iron. Let's get the PETG and our brass inserts ready. We activate the soldering iron by holding the red button and set it to 220 degrees Celsius. Just wait as it adjusts the temperature. Then take a threaded insert, place it in the hole, and bring down the soldering iron to push it down. It goes in pretty easily. But I had to give it another push to get it in all the way. And there you go. It's looking great. I'll do the same for the rest of them, placing the inserts in the holes and pushing them in. I like how they rotate <laughs> as you push them in. That's pretty cool. Now for the last one here. That's looking really awesome. Really professional. All right, now we're gonna adjust the temperature for the PLA, which needs to be 190 degrees Celsius. And we're just gonna wait for it to adjust. And now it's ready. We'll bring in the red PLA box, place all the brass inserts into the holes, and start using the heated tool to push them in. I realized that it might be better to increase the temperature from 190 degrees Celsius to maybe 195 or 200 degrees because it's taking a bit longer than expected to insert these, requiring more time and effort to hold it down and push through. As you can see, I thought I had it in, but it just needed a little more time. Though it's okay because they still went in and did a good job. I just needed to push this last one in a bit more, and then it was done. It's looking really nice and flush. I'm just going to hold the red button to turn off the soldering iron. Now I have a little screw kit here with a M3x6. I'll grab eight of them and a small Phillips screwdriver that looks to be the right fit. I'll put the lid on top of the PLA box and start screwing it down at every corner. And there you have it. The lid is securely in place. Perfect for enclosing something like a Raspberry Pi device. Moving on to the PETG. I'm going to screw that in as well. And both the PETG and PLA were really easy for inserting these threaded brass inserts. And both are looking really nice and clean. Well, there you have it folks. This is the 3D ZW Man heat insert press. And we got both boxes threaded up and they're looking great. I had a blast using this tool. We've seen just how handy heat set press threaded inserts can be for 3D printing, from sturdy electronic enclosures to customizable cosplay accessories. These small but mighty tools allow for makers to elevate their creations, ensuring durability and functionality in designs that require frequent adjustments or component replacements. Whether you're enhancing your everyday gadgets or crafting intricate props, the application of these inserts opens up a lot of possibilities. But that about wraps it up here in the tiny 3D print farm. 3D Theory here, as always, until next time, peace, love, and joy.